So hello, hello everyone. I'll give you just a couple of more minutes and see if someone is a little bit late. Hi. I feel like a like a Twitch influencer now. It's weird to talk to people and not be able to see their faces. So use the chat as much as you can. So I feel like I'm not talking to myself. Can you hear me well? Yeah, cool, great. Ooh, 94 people. Nice. Do you wanna write in the chat where you are, uh, where you are right now? In which city, in which country? Lots of Berliners. Oh, Norway, nice. Brazil, Mexico. Wow, that's amazing. Russia. Hi, Russia. <laughs> Glasgow. Nice. The US. Wow, this is amazing. Cool. So I'll give you one more minute and I'll start answering this, trying to answer this question, which is a little promising. Okay, so now I'll be talking and please uh, let's do some Q&A in the chat. Obviously um, afterwards, I won't be able to, you know, juggle presentation and um, looking at my notes and then seeing the chat and answering questions, but I would love to answer all the questions at the end of the presentation. So there's a little bit of time for that afterwards. Right, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Inda and I am a language educator and a language lover who has been helping build an incredible product, a company called Chatterbug, um, which I'm going only to try to sell um, at the end of the talk. So stay tuned. I won't bother you with, you with that um, until the end. So early this year, um, when we all heard um, the news about this novel coronavirus, little did we know that we would see this. You know, as if washing your hands 20 times a day um, wasn't hard enough. Uh, now I have this song stuck um, in my mind every single time I wash my hands. So um, seriously, I mean, who, who, who knew other than Bill Gates how, how this pandemic would was going to, to reshape the world, our work, um, our relationships, and, and even the way we learn. So in March this year, we were already in, on, on lockdown here in Berlin. And, you know, I'm an introvert, so I was like, yeah. I couldn't but fall into this sourdough um, bread trend. I also did learn, as everyone else on Instagram, how to make it. Um, I also bought some workout equipment. I ordered several books. I prepared myself for my quarantine boot camp, right? So I finally had the time to catch up with um, all these long standing personal projects I've had for a while. And um, I, I didn't have to do so many things um, now, like, you know, getting ready for to go to the office. An hour a day, that's, that's, you know, five hours a week. That's a book a week you can read. And I, I was, I was uh, very excited about this. Um, I also wanted to improve my painting skills. I wanted to learn how to play the ukulele. So I bought an ukulele. 
um, yeah, lots of lots of projects. Um, so in short, I, I, I worked out, I improved my diet, I read several books, and most importantly, I learned how to make bread. Um, so basically, this presentation is over. Go enjoy your quarantine, right? <laughs> that was obviously all I intended to do. Um, and I did for a few weeks. Um, this is the nice thing about motivation that, you know, it makes you dream big and, 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 and do wonderful things um, for short periods of time. Um, so after a few weeks of uh, streaks, I, yeah, I found my marvelous uh, routine interrupted by, well, these exceptional circumstances that are kind of putting a test on our sanity. Um, and then I read this brilliant piece of advice. I don't know if you can see it. Experts recommend keeping uh, daily rituals, um, even when you're working from home. So I was like, okay, this is brilliant. Um, during the April lockdown, I was determined to not succumb in, in to these long PJ days. You know, when you when your leisure and work just merge into one. Um, you're talking to your family and at the same time you're online shopping. Uh, you clean during working hours, you work during sleeping hours, uh, you shower only on Sundays, you know. Um, I was like, what, what is it that would make me stick to all these personal projects I had? But most importantly, like, how come we find the determination and the commitment to do things we have been doing for a long time, right? So washing our hands is a good example. Right? It's not fun, um, and it's funny how we get um, used to doing this stuff without, without questioning them. Habits involve no decision making, and this is why they are so powerful and so great. You know, researchers have been uh, uh, studying decision making for quite a long time, and, and they're all in agreement that decision making happens mostly in your emotional brain. So every time you have to decide whether you should, um, you should do something or not, chances are that you might end up not doing uh, the most rational uh, thing and not making the most rational decisions. It's the powerful habits uh, we should be chasing and not motivation after all. So excellent habits make us function and accomplish excellent uh, goals and, and, and we have perseverance, right? And, and um, because we just circumvent this, this uh, should I do it? Um, we just do it, you know? Nike knows that and they write it all the time. So if you are like me, struggling to keep your sanity in times like this, let me suggest you focus on creating healthy, healthy habits for, for your mind, for your routine. Um, and as a result, you'll be more productive and happier too, or so they claim, right? So let me share with you my uh, five, my top five um, language learning hacks, because I mean, this is a language conference um, or habits, if you will. So hack number one is talk to yourself in the language you're learning. One thing I've noticed is that 10 years ago, I was much more used to be with my thoughts and I would practice German in my mind all the time. But then I got an iPod and music followed me everywhere I went. And then Spotify and social media, you know, started feeling almost every silent minute of my day. And I was waiting in line, you know, scrolling Instagram, uh, running with headphones on, um, when taking a shower or cleaning, I was um, listening to some podcast or TED talk um, that, I, that is supposed to, you know, to make you wiser, smarter, uh, more woke. Um, so I didn't realize, damn, <laughs> I'm listening to everyone, uh, to everyone else's uh, thoughts and ideas, and and and, but never my own. Um, so I don't, I don't give myself the silence. Um, that will help me talk to myself, uh, process information, and, 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 you know, come up with the creative ideas and solutions of my own. So rather than talking about um, what to do, really, 
I'm going to ask you one thing. Don't you miss being with your thoughts uh, as you used to be before the mobile phone was capable of, you know, filling every free minute of your day with content? I sure did. And then I started uh, carefully choosing when to listen to others and when to listen to myself. And I went back to the habit that I really enjoyed, which was talking to myself in a foreign language. So try it, it's free, and you will be surprised how much you improve your language. Hack number two, schedule time to learn. I mean, this is not a, a, a massively surprisingly thing. Um, you know, nutrition experts, for instance, tell you to plan your meals ahead of time, right? Because it turns out when you're hungry, uh, you don't make clever food choices. Makes sense, right? Um, so same with learning. If you don't schedule to learn, you'll find a million other things to do rather than learning, obviously, um, especially now that you're home. Um, so there is plenty of research um, supporting this theory too. Um, one of my favorite uh, ones is, uh, is one where, where the, they took 248 participants, they divided the group in three. And, and then they, all the participants were asked to exercise more regularly, right? Over a course of two weeks. Group number one, called the control group, they had to track how much they exercised. That was all they had to do. Group number two had to track, plus they were giving some motivational information so that they would be intrinsically motivated to exercise. They call them the motivation group. And then the third group, the intention group, was asked to do all the previous, plus to write this. I will partake in at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on day, at time of the day, in a at place. So do you know what happened? The control group, 35% of people exercised. Not bad, but also, I mean, hmm, chances are, um, if you, you know, test students, um, these vocabulary tests, you know, those things, we know they don't really work. Then the motivation group, um, I was astonished that it was just, you know, 3% higher than the control group. I thought we would be like something in between, but it's hardly any uh, improvement here. Um, and then the intention group, it was 91% of people that exercised just because they wrote it, just because they planned to do it, right? It's different. So schedule time to learn. It works most of the time. Hack number three, this is one that I actually owe to one uh, student. I'll tell you the story in a second. So um, believe me, when you become a famous polyglot, um, people will always ask you about funny anecdotes that you had learning a language. I'm not a famous polyglot, but I just said that so you will think I am. Um, so not only would you learn from, from your mistakes, um, if you keep track of them, obviously, but you also teach yourself that those are quite fun, that are funny, you know? Um, so first of all, for, just forgive yourself. For, for your inability to express exactly what you would wish, you know, and sound as smart as you would hope in your foreign language. It's normal. It's expected to sound quite silly a lot of the times. So mistakes are a great opportunity to, to entertain an audience with funny anecdotes. And you should embrace those. You should be happy uh, about those. So here goes my anecdote. I need to just drink a sip of water. Second. <clears throat> so, I was teaching English in Brazil back in 2016, and I noticed one of my students uh, looked sad all day on that day. Um, so, after class, I asked him, hey, are you okay? And he says, no, I got laid. So, 
I was shocked, obviously, and a little concerned about how, you know, inappropriate that conversation was turning all of a sudden. Um, and then I answered like, I don't think I understand, but I'm also not sure I want to understand. And, and then he was like, you know, he didn't really, and then he was like, well, my boss told me today I will get laid. So he was getting out of control very quickly, you know, was he, was he like reporting sexual abuse? I, um, I feel, you know, I was like, should I call the police? Uh, I, I don't know. And then I realized, my God, to my really greatest relief, um, that he meant laid off, you know, phrasal verbs. Um, so <laughs> I feel bad I got relieved. I mean, poor thing, he lost his job, but I was relieved in that moment. Um, so a few weeks later, he, um, he was doing better already. So I explained to him the misunderstanding and, and we laughed so much and it was all fine. And then, and then he told me, um, oh, that's, that's going to my mistakes diary. And, and he said, you know, I keep track of the things like this because I think they're funny and I want to remember them for later. I was like, oh, that's brilliant. That's such a great idea. And I have been telling all. Oh, uh, the people I, 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 you know, I've ever taught, I've, I've told them this, this story because I feel that this is, <laughs> this is such a great attitude um, towards learning a language. And this is how, how it, you know, you are going to make mistakes. Either you choose to laugh and, and to embrace them or you choose to get frustrated and, and, and obviously you won't enjoy learning a language then. So keep that in mind. Finally. Hack number four, create a learning space. And by space, I mean anything, really. It can be a space in your mind even. I'll give you a couple of examples for those. So first of all, if you wanna create a habit um, or you wanna avoid the bad habits that you have, you need to understand how habits work in our minds, you know, how, how they're triggered. Um, I've been reading about this um, so I'm going to share with you a very compressed version of it. Um, let me share you with you an example. So um, we are all pretty familiar with bad habits most of the times. So walk into the kitchen and opening the fridge just to see what's in there. Even, even if you just had lunch, right? So the kitchen and especially the fridge um, are triggers that tell our brain, you know, Yummy, yummy, yummy. I got love in my tummy. You know, this is, this is, this is what your, your brain tells you every time you see the fridge. And, and that's the, the tummy association um, in your brain that, you know, it's, it's, it's a reward you had in the past that, you know, it makes you happy. So every time you go there, you open the fridge. So the fridge is the trigger um, for the happy tummy. And the habit is created. You keep coming. It's a routine. And it's a, a very unconscious one sometimes. Every time we grab our phone, it happens the same, right? Look, most of us um, open social media. Um, sometimes I write lists, uh, you know, for, um, for, for, for the supermarket or something in my notes and in, in the mobile. And then I go to the supermarket and then I open my mobile to see the list. But in the moment I open the mobile phone, I already click on Instagram. <laughs> and then I keep scrolling in the middle of the supermarket and I'm like, what, what did I want my mobile again? It's like, I, I completely forgot why I took my mobile phone in the first place. I wanted to look at the list, but I am already scrolling. You know, this is the type of unconscious habit um, that we have all been a, a victim of. Some more, some less, but you know, we, have, we are hooked into these things. And why? Because um, the phone is a trigger um, and, and the likes and the comments we get in social media um, is a reward. So we keep coming back for more, right? Um, and, and, and this is, you know, basically how, how habits work. So um, the reason why our homes might be the most, you know, the hardest place to be in times of the, like this is because we have so many triggers there. And the thing is that a lot of the triggers we have at home are not necessarily associated with hard work and exercise and efficiency. Um, because, you know, before COVID, um, most of people didn't, didn't have to be highly productive at home. 
So home used to be, for many of us, um, associated with free time, with rest and enjoyment. And um, I mean, if that's not for you, then, then you need new neighbors. Um, so now our home is a multi-purpose space, right? Like uh, you might use your kitchen counter to, to, to chop onions and to do some table push-ups and, and to have some Zoom meetings, you know? Um, so no wonder our brain is, is, is all over the place, right? Um, so many associations fighting each other all the time. Um, and, 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 and how can we use the triggers to our advantage? You know, we should. Um, so there are different types of triggers, first of all. Um, the location-based ones, obviously the kitchen will always be associated with food. But then there are also time-based ones and people-based ones. You get the idea, anything can be a trigger. So here are a few ideas you can implement to learn from home and create some nice new triggers for your learning habits. So the one with the learning space, um, it's, I think it's, it's a pretty straightforward one. Um, you know, a place where you use it consistently for learning um, could be a desk, but also a standing desk because studies have shown that Lots of people perform better when they're standing. Um, they're, they're cognitively better. But you can also use sounds. You can use music, smell, um, anything to create a ritual um, and tell your brain you are about to start learning, right? Your favorite tea, um, your favorite wine. Um, be careful with that one though. Um, so Pavlov, you know, the the, I'm sorry, the, the, the teachers um, among the audience might know this story already. Pablo was a researcher and, and he, um, he was using his dog, basically Pablo's dog, um, to prove a theory he had, which is um, called conditioning, right? Like every time he would give food to his dog, he would ring a bell. And after, after having done this uh, many, many times, um, he would ring the bell and the dog would start drooling already. Um, so basically, uh, the salivation of the dog was the proof that, um, you know, the dog had made the association that the bell was, you know, synonymous to how oh, food is coming. And, and this is something we can do as well when we're learning. You can either, you know, create this little space of yours that it's pretty nice and comfy and, and, and have something to reward yourself with, something that you like to eat or drink, or some space in the house that it's particularly comfy and nice for you, or a particular time of the day that is especially, you know, where you're especially focused. So there are lots of things you can do to create those nice triggers. I'll give you an example of how creative those triggers can be. Um, so when I was a student, I had this nine square, um, uh, meter bedroom. Uh, it, was, it was tiny, really. Uh, and, and then I shared a flat with, uh, with three other boys. So um, they were my friends, so it was, uh, it was a pretty great time. But um, I had to be creative, you know, to, to be a good student. And I remember once I had to memorize 600 Latin words in, 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 in two weeks. I had two weeks to, to do that. So I graded, flash, um, you know, the, the paper flashcards. Um, and then I went uh, for a walk in the park every day, two hours a day, to go over them. And just in the park, I was walking and going through my flashcards. And I created this little habit and I was almost looking forward to it because I really love this park. So the park became the trigger for my learning and also my reward at some, at some point. And what I did was basically avoid all the triggers um, that would prompt negative habits. Um, like, you know, every time I saw the face of one of my flatmates, I wanted to watch Dr. House. So I just escaped the house, you know. Um, I used a, a new location, basically, to create a new association and a new routine. And yeah, I learned those horrible words and then I forgot them. Um, two weeks later, but it worked. And then finally, the hack number five is that all. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Chatterbug just because I love it, not because I have to. Um, when, I mean, 
when did language learning become so crowded in the first place? Um, crowded with choices. I bet you feel like you're not taking advantage of all the resources out there. I mean, there are apps, podcasts, YouTubers, online classes, in-person classes, private uh, group classes, obviously, flashcard systems. There are free apps, there are paid apps, um, tutor marketplaces, tandem systems. I mean, so much. Um, and I'm sure um, all of them are somehow useful in one way or another. But there is none. <laughs> and I'm telling you this as a teacher, as an educator. There is none that combines everything you need to get fluent in such a flexible and effective way as Jetterbug does. And uh, I have been working for this company from the very, very start of this company. I've been able to shape this company and, and, and I'm pretty lucky and, 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 and happy about this. So we make language learning as effortless as it can be. Uh, not Duolingo effortless, obviously, like effort effective, right? Um, like cost effective, effort effective. So neither we nor anyone I know has yet discovered um, the way to learn a language in 10 minutes a day, right? Um, I mean, it depends, right? Like you could learn 10 minutes a day and then you could learn something, right? But, you know, being able to communicate successfully, learning 10 minutes a day, um, that's only possible if you have 20 years. So, um, I know you're wondering why is Chatterbell so special? I mean, there's so many other products. Uh, well, I think what makes Chatterbell special is that it has been created by tech and education experts. So, you know, tech people tend to gamify and automatize stuff. Um, and teachers, um, they tend to look at stuff with a conservative eye, right? Um, we like to blame the students for not learning, right? You know, uh, toughen up, get over it. Now listen to this grammar rule, you know? Um, so tech people like to blame technology. They are like, hmm, the students didn't show up to this lesson. You know, I wonder... I wonder if this button is not red enough, you know, <laughs> like it is, this company is so much fun to work with because there are so many different types of minds contributing to one product. So there's 42 of us and we produce all the materials for our uh, classes, which are, which follow the common European framework um, for all levels. We produce self-study materials also from scratch, including readings. Um, we have videos with captions. We have um, a little video team. Uh, we have two successful podcasts. Uh, you should listen to them afterwards. It's for free. Um, we have a YouTube live stream, which is pretty awesome. We have a VR team with, um, they created this amazing game the other day and I learned 30 Finnish words in an hour. And I had never heard even Finnish before. Um, so it's pretty amazing and exciting. Um, and, and we will be publishing uh, some books pretty soon as well. And this is all done by 42 people. And this blows my mind every single time. So why we do all this? We know that language learning is a skill that you learn by speaking. It's muscle memory. It's cultural understanding. It's humor. It's friendship. It's community. Our primary focus is, and always will be, making it easy and enjoyable to connect with another human being um, and practice speaking. So everything else without speaking is meaningless. So if you find yourself struggling to pick a service, pick us, <laughs> I can guarantee. If you don't like it, uh, send me an email, please. I'll make sure that um, I take all your suggestions. So how is this talk gonna help you not lose your mind uh, when learning from home? Not very sure, but you know, that title sounded very catchy. Um, but I really want to share with you uh, a really nice quote from, uh, 
Michali Chiche Michali. I think this is how it's pronounced. I even texted my friend today. She speaks Croatian. I was like, hey, can you send me an audio? I want to pronounce this name. Um, so anyways, he wrote this book called um, The Float State. And, and I really love this, um, this quote, which I'm going to read. Uh, the best moments in our life are not the passive, receptive, relaxing times. The best moments usually occur if a person's body or mind is stretched to its limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. Thank you.